The third International Phytate Summit concluded today with industry experts discussing the anti-nutritional impact of phytate on protein digestibility and the positive influence of phytase on amino acids. This was actually my favorite uh, day of the session thus far because I work with aquatic animals and their entire surface are composed of mucosal barriers and this morning's talks highlighted the influence of phytate on chelating uh, amino acids that can alter um, uh, mucin production. Um, I thought kind of interesting, they also showed that small intestinal trypsin activity was also reduced, so again we're in the small intestine having some impact, and also alanine aminopeptidase, and that's a brush border enzyme, so you start to think that that's really quite interesting that somehow uh, an influence has went to, through the brush border, so it's passed through the mucin layer and, and had some impact. The industry is always trying to uh, get better and evolve to being more efficient and sustainable. And one of the things we do is in trying to understand how amino acids are utilized and use, utilizing them most effectively is one of, those, one of those methods. And so in summary for a lot of these transport systems, there are a host of different uh, systems for, um, for the amino acids, whether through sodium, through sodium and potassium, or through sodium. And, uh, and, chlor and chloride ion. One of the main challenges is the use of phytases in cold water fish species, mm -hmm. that uh, the activity is not very high, so uh, we need to use more units of phytase uh, for these species. We can reduce at and a half the discharge of phosphorus with these super dosing of phytases. Uh, this for me, in our, for, for our university, we are doing some experiments of phytase and it's important to understand what really happens. Uh, what I found in mummies is that the pH affects the parathyroid hormone, which affects phosphorus excretion. The uh, hydrogen peroxide or oxidative stress also affect the kidney and intestinal uptake and also affect thigh junction protein. I've realized it's a new world, there's a new normal. And my basal diet has to include a certain level of phytase. That's what the industry is using. So I'm going to finish the conference on an amino acid presentation looking at phytate implications of a number of amino acids. So we look at this and we talked about phytase, but can we look at this and say IP6 has changed the amino acid requirement of the chicken? That's the way I see it. When you compare with four years ago, what evolution do you have during this period? It's really impressive and it makes me think about new experiments and new ideas to work with. When one realizes that the benefits of superdosing phytase uh, to destroy the anti-nutrient phytate actually go beyond calcium and phosphorus to amino acid release, trace mineral release, whole body energetics improvements, then one says what other unanticipated benefits might there be?